Hey partners, you've heard the saying, bigger's always better, right? Hey guys, welcome back to Rolaid's Bench. This is Roland. Today we're going to discuss all the different currently available viewing devices for your night vision setup. This is a 9 inch viewing device. Actually kind of a rear view, backup monitor whatnot. And I got a bunch of other stuff here today. So, let's dig in a little bit, have some fun, and just look at the options that are available to you guys as you're setting up your own DIY night vision setup. Come on, partners. Let's take a look. All right, so we have the 9-inch, a 7-inch here, and then a 5 inch screen and these are all what they call HD now. They are an 800 by 480 display. Right here we have this fairly common 4.3 that's about half the resolution. We have the infamous DVR that's just so-so. Again about half the resolution. And we have a new D DVR here that I've been playing with and tried that only will work on a color camera. But it is 5 inch screen and it is the same resolution as this screen, 5 inch screen right here. Along with this we have, if you choose to use a goggle setup, we're going to look at the RAP 920s by Vuzix, and then their newer RAP 1200 by Vuzix. Along with, we're going to be looking at two different ways, this setup here and this setup here to transmit wireless video feed to other monitors. And we'll talk about how I've used that so far. All right guys, I'll try to move along and make this fast and informative. It's hard to do both though. So, let's get started. Back to this nine inch monitor. It's set up with a fancy little sliding devices here and a couple Velcro straps to actually put on your rear view mirror of your vehicle. Why do you say that I have this? Okay, the gun thing was a joke. I think you knew that. But it's huge. Now it came with a glossy screen and I've actually put on for uh, glare purposes some of the anti-glare that you can get all kinds of different brands of anti-glare stick on um, for your iPad, for your phones, for that kind of thing. And I put that on here because I had a glossy surface. The same way with this little screen here. I stuck some on so that uh, the occasional shine that you might get off of that screen doesn't cause problems. Now, why did I use this one and why do I have a 9 and a 7? The 7 I just got kind of for in between and partly because I wanted to test all these different ones and show you guys something. The 9 I especially got because last year in the fall we were shooting starlings in the barn and we would get three to four guys at times and be sitting in a truck. And I'll show you a picture here of my brother set up that way. So, there we are in this truck. He's got goggles, the, the uh, Vuzix glasses. He's using them for sh the shooting, which work awesome. About everybody that's used them for very long. If you can handle that, they're, they're sweet glasses. The rest of us wanted to see what he was doing too. Well, we had set up this little monitor right here. This tiny little guy. We had had set up 4.3, kind of strapped onto the rear view mirror of the truck so that we could all watch the fun too. And we would take turns shooting and the rest of us could help spot for different shots and whatnot. Well, we've learned that that's a lot of fun. We did it a few different times. In fact, just a couple weeks ago, my wife, using this wireless receiving DVR, we'll talk about in a little bit, was with me doing some rat hunting and I was able to use the wireless again to broadcast everything I was seeing through my 2.0 setup so when I would go from my spotter cam to my scope cam she could view it all here and then hit record whenever she wanted to record spots of what we were doing and she had a ball. So it's kind of fun to share your hunting experiences. That's the whole reason behind these large monitors. Now. These three monitors right here, they are all in the higher definition, the newer realm, 800 by 480 resolution. Now, I used a uh, loop 
viewing device. You know what? I'm gonna get that, I'll be right back. And I'm back. I used this loop viewing device that I got to see if possibly do I wanna set one of these up for more of a scope type view. And I used it to count the pixels at certain spots to see, did we really have double or some of these Chinese guys faking us out? Um, really, these were a higher definition and including this guy right here, they were all double the pixelation of our earlier uh, JDXD 990 and the standard 4.3 monitor that I uh, have been using and a lot of people have used. So, the seven inch, if you want something this big on the gun, um, you could. There's a couple different ways. I'm sure you could configure a mounting setup off of this mount here. I'm not going to go into that major detail. You guys can uh, look into that a little more. But one of the things to think about on all of these monitors is they're set up for a 16-9 ratio, or zoom they call it, although they're not really zooming. So they say 4.3 or 16.9. Well, our cameras currently aren't giving us that wide 16-9 um, ratio. So if you choose to leave it in 16-9 mode to fill the whole screen up, you are stretching it. If you choose to do that, that's fine. Otherwise, you'll only be using so much of the screen if you want the true um, four, 4 to 3 ratio that gives you a non-stretched view. Again, all of these they would be cropped in a little bit. Um, I found that all of these screens, if you tweak the settings just a little bit from of brightness and contrast, you can pretty much get them to look all with the same quality. Having said that, right out of the box, they're not all the same. So one thing to remember in this whole getting the camera tweaked right and the screen tweaked right is you have so many settings. You have internal camera settings with some cameras that allow you, uh, like the EJ230, you can you can tweak contrast and brightness and so forth at the camera. You can also tweak it at the monitor. So these different adjustments or tweaks in the end is going to give you a pretty wide range of how this is this going to look. So the reasons for the big monitors we've discussed and I'll put them down here. All right, so now just a little more detail on what I would say my current favorite gun mounted five inch HD display is. This is how it comes from the manufacturer. It comes with a suction cup window mount and a little ball set up here. So you have a very nice swivelable mount. If you remember on my earlier videos, I show how to take this older screen and kind of turn this in, this ball into a little more swivelable mount. Um, again though, this monitor to me is now um, old fashioned. We got double the resolution and a slick little way to make this into a mount. To, mod to modify this, I used a quarter 20 bolt, which I put through the bottom of a Weaver Picatinny swivel mount. I bolted it down with a lock nut, bent it, and right here I used a little ball, a wooden craft ball that my wife happened to have in her craft drawer of stuff. So that little wooden ball had a hole in it that screwed right onto a quarter 20 thread. I have, I don't know where to tell you to get them, but I think at like Hobby Lobby or any craft store, pop that ball in there. And now you have a quickly, easy to mount, five inch HD display, which I think now is taking the place of this older 4.3. So the next thing is, how does this idea work here? And could this be a concept for those who want to do this number because they want their head down close to where the scope is or was? I played with this just a little bit. You don't quite get the full screen view, which is workable. I personally didn't care for the look. I would rather uh, change my position shooting and use the screen from a distance. Again, that is my opinion. All right, now let's take a quick peek at this high definition five inch DVR. 
for the price, this could be an awesome little piece of equipment if it didn't have this problem. It will only record in a color camera or color mode on your camera. If you're using a camera that is only black and white or which automatically switches to black and white when you're in night vision mode, this thing will freeze up just on the video feed within about two minutes. And when you attempt to record anything, it just won't hardly ever do it. And if it tries, it locks up. Then you have to do a hard reset with the little button down here and get it to work again. If you're on color mode, I've had no problems with it. It's an easy to navigate system, much easier than the uh, GXD 990 right here. The, the, uh, also the option as far as the wireless receiving setup makes it easy to use for other people to be hunting along with you if you choose to use a wireless transmitter. And um, I think it's got some potential. I've been in contact with China um, indirectly through a couple different vendors to the manufacturer. They do occasionally come out with firmware updates. If they update the firmware so that this uses black, will use a black and white camera, I will make another video specifically on this and let people know because for the price, it's probably one of the best options out there with all the different functionality. It does include a um, AVN. So you can directly go in AV, AVN um, if you don't want to use a wireless setup and you want to record and you have color. All right, now to one of my favorite viewing devices, the Vuzix glasses. This is the 920. You can usually put, pick these up um, on eBay for around 200 if they're a new or refurb unit, maybe 150 if they're used. Uh, they do they no longer make these you cannot order these directly from the manufacturer anymore They uh, the Replacement is the views the views X wrap 1200 the 1200 has a few more options um, I do like them better The problem is there will be they will be about 420 to 450 dollars new You may be able to pick them up used in the 350 realm the main differences are, are this screen here is a standard 4-3 viewing ratio. So it is what your cameras will put out in the night vision setup. These screens are not quite as bright as the newer LCDs that are in this. Also, there is you can adjust the focus from each eye up here, but you cannot adjust the diopter, um, the distance, I'm sorry, this is the diopter. You cannot um, adjust the distance between the pupils, kind of like a, one of binoculars. And that's one of the nice features of this here. You have two sliders up here that can move each lens so that between that and getting this nose piece adjusted right, you can get a very centered view, which is easier on your eyes. Along with that, this now has a 16-9 ratio. And that 16-9, the the Vuzix glasses with your little controller here will allow you to do not just a stretch but you will actually allow to do a zoom which will crop the top and bottom so if you want to you can either leave it in the 4-3 mode which doesn't use up the whole LCD or you can make it zoom for the 16-9 ratio and it won't be stretching the picture like these other um, displays will actually stretch the picture I wish I could show you all this. It's a real challenge to try to get a camera right here and everything set up, and I don't have the time to do that now. But um, if anybody's here close to Ohio and wants to try any of these out, give me a shout. Um, but for uh, shooting in the barns at night for rats and, and starlings and so forth, I have really liked the glasses set up. So now just a little bit of info on if you want to share or broadcast your what you're seeing through your scope and or through your scopeless setup. This little setup you can get on Amazon for I think around $15 to $20. You have a transmitter and a receiver. Um, I've used these last fall a little bit. Occasionally they've gotten so warm that they've kind of uh, flaked out and you have to unplug them and plug them back in to kind of reset them and then they would work right away but it seemed like if they would get a little extra hot 
they tend to have a little bit of uh, lockup issues and they would need reset. I've occasionally still used these um, and they transmit, I believe at least this one here, this setup transmits on channel 8 and um, you have channel 1 through 4 available for instance in this setup you can transmit on 1 through 4 or receive this transmit setup right here 1 through 4. This is a different combination and this uh, I had to get directly from China. I like this a little better. The other thing about this compared to this one is this also has a microphone in it so it'll transmit so that you can get video and audio. It also will hook directly. It's got the uh, male BNC so it will hook directly into the back of your camera or, or the, the cable from your camera either way. It also has a second little plug so you can have a uh, one, one power cord coming into this, powering this and then back out and to your camera. So it takes care of the uh, power situation right at your camera also. Slick little device. Um, this is my pick of the two. You'll pay a little more money. I believe this whole combination is about $40. And this receiver then can plug, it's a little heavier. It uses a 12 volt power supply and it can plug into one of your larger viewing monitors as I've talked about before. Occasionally when we've been inside of some of the barns and I've had someone out in a vehicle, either one of these, like most of this type of wireless device, will not transmit through metal. So it's, you're gonna get a blurry or blue screen. Um, but other than that, they've worked at relative, reasonably, what, 100, 200 yard ranges, if it's fairly open sight, and can add a lot of fun to your hunt by sharing what you're seeing with the other guys. Well guys, I hope this gave you a little more information about your choices that you've got. Um, I will be putting all of this in a spreadsheet, making it linkable, so look down in the video description in YouTube and find the links to all this stuff. If you got questions, post them. I'll try to help you out. Thank you. Well, partners, I hope this has helped you all make a few choices about your night vision viewing devices. And like they say, it's fixing to storm soon. So I'm going to have to make like sheep and get the flock out of here. Take care.